Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to take a look at the newest Era 2 Cold War Premium, the Leopard 1 A1. But before I get into the details of this tank, if you enjoy this video, please leave it a like, a comment, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Right then, the Leopard 1 A1. What is it like to play, and should you get one? Well, for those of you that are short on time, here's my quick review. The Leopard is really, really nice to play. I really, really like this tank. It's agile, fairly quick, and has an excellent gun. It is a typical Leopard, though, in the sense that the armor is nothing to shout about. Aside from that, though, this tank really does feel good to play. I really, really do like this tank. It pens when you want it to. It has the mobility to get you to where you want to go. And speaking of places that I would want to go, here's this is the new map. Well, not new map. It's a returning map, Nomenhan. And I'm so pleased that Wargaming haven't removed my little uh, Lion King rock here. I love I love sniping from this position, especially with True Vision. This map is ah. Oh, it's just perfect. Awesome. I love it. Anyway. <laughs> the only the only bad thing I would have to say about the Leopard is the armor. That is what you would probably call that is the balancing uh, point of this tank. If, if, if the Leopard had armor, it would probably be put into the overpowered, broken category. So I believe this is why Wargaming have stuck to the sort of historical accuracy of the tank. It's not the best for armor. Right. As far as recommending this tank goes though, if you're starting out, you can of course get the Leopard. I can't stop you getting the Leopard, but the armor is not forgiving. It will not forgive mistakes. So I would be hesitant to recommend this to a brand new player. But if you're a seasoned player, then absolutely, I highly recommend the Leopard. What The Leopard 1 A1 is highly recommended by me for seasoned players. Hands down, no question about it. It feels fantastic to play. Right then, let's take a deeper look at this tank. Starting with the biggest issue, the armor. The thickest armor is on the upper front plate. 70 millimeters sloped at what looks to be about 45 degrees. The only thing you might bounce from the front is a BMP2 firing standard rounds and quick drive by there on the T72 bye bye yeah anyway bouncing from the front you'll probably only bounce a BMP2 from the front if they're firing standard rounds and it's a BMP2 Ugh, they'll just drive around you and pen you in the side so the armor is not something that you can count on protecting you at all I'd well I say that Coming up in this game, I'm about to play the ridge line that is straight ahead of my tank right now. And I believe, if I remember right, I do bounce around from an FV off the top of the turret. So, I'll correct that to say, if an enemy round hits you, it will pen 99% of the time. That's the armor. Don't count on it to protect you, basically. That's what I'm saying. So, moving on. Gun and ammunition. The A1 has 449 millimeters of penetration and 460 average alpha on the standard rounds. That alpha is good, but that penetration, oh my word, the, the, the MBT-70, the Era 3 Premium MBT-70 doesn't have that much pen, and it's Era 3. That pen is, it's in, that's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal, and... I, I cannot fault I cannot fault this gun because you combine that with the nine degrees of gun depression that it's got and the 0 0.22 accuracy, you're you're absolutely lethal, absolutely lethal in this thing. Mobility wise, its top speed is 65 kilometers an hour, but I've had it up to about 70 I think. I think at the start of this game, I was going downhill and yeah. 70 kilometers an hour downhill, no problem. But here's an example of how good this gun is. Straight through the front of the T72. T72 has no gun depression. Down the ri I'm down the hill from him, circling him, using the mobility. He's trying to run away. Snapshot, kills him. You, I, this tank just, it just feels 
so good to play. It, it, I'm struggling to use my words here. <laughs> it it just for me anyway. It's just gelled with me, and I really really like the feel of this. This was my first game in the Leopard, so I've got no problem putting a shot in the side of a T72. But I am I was hesitant to face off with an FV. Right there, hesitant pull back. Aim for the dodgy weak spot, but yeah, you know, it's an FV. But I'm, you know, I'm confident that I can take this guy out, and he's dead anyway. So the mobility of this thing is really, really nice. It really does feel good. If I had to fault the mobility at all, I would say it feels just a touch sluggish up hills. But I mean, that's real. That's me really, really stretching to fault this tank. So, other aspects of the tank. Mobility is one of them that we've talked about, but the, the power to weight ratio for the Leopard comes in at 20, which isn't as good as the M60 Rise, which is another Era 2 Premium, but it is better than the WZ-122. So, to give you an idea, the Leopard is somewhere between the WZ-122 and the Rise, and at no point did I think the 122 was bad, so... There, yeah, that gives you an idea. First game, and I finished second. And how much silver do we get? 185,000 silver on a winning game. That's that's really nice. I had no no boosts on there. Absolutely nothing. This is my second game. And while we're watching the second game, I'll carry on talking about the leopard. The view range is very good, coming in at 537 meters, and its concealment is also very good coming out 334 meters I'm there's nothing there's nothing I can say about this tank negative in a negative sense that I haven't already said and if I remember rightly we have a friendly leopard going straight into the boundary yep unlucky dude yeah the the armor is really the only negative thing I can say about the leopard that's it Everything else about this vehicle is fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed playing it so far. But I think I think the biggest question that people will be asking isn't whether or not the Leopard is good or isn't it good. I mean, that does matter, obviously, but the, the Leopard is the season reward tank. And in Era 2, everybody knows the issue with Era 2 is the infestation of... FV4211s. So that leads to the question of will the balance of Era 2 be tipped at all away from the FV with the Leopard being a thing in the game now? The Leopard is a season reward tank. Lose my grip, slide down the hill. It is a season reward tank, so that does mean that in the next couple of weeks, I think it's likely that we will see an influx of Leopards into Era 2. And my gut is telling me that the balance will tip, but it won't be a huge change. I think the leopard will come out on top eventually, and I'm back, back, backwards and forwards here, hoping the light tank would ram to the side of me, but he didn't get the kill on him anyway. Nice one. Yeah, the balance of era two. Um, I think it will change. I think it will change away from the FV because the leopard's gun is just absolutely mental it's really really good and the FV does have weak spots it's not unbeatable and the mobility of the leopard does mean that there is the potential to if you can't outgun them at range you have the option to outgun them at close range that is you know that is an option now so I don't think the FV is going to be king of era 2 for that much longer the more people that get the leopard I think the balance will change somewhat which I'm not against, really, because, you know, playing Era 2 and you've got six or seven FVs on one team does get a little dull, I will be honest. So, that's my prediction for Era 2. To me, the A1 feels like a really, really well-balanced vehicle, and its performance potential is phenomenal. Sure, its armour is lacking, but, as with all vehicles, it it needs to be played to its strengths. 
I really, really like the Leopard 1, A1. And I would recommend this tank to all season players. Maybe not to newer players, because, like I've said, the armor is a problem. And if you're new to the game, you probably want a vehicle that is more forgiving of any kind of mistakes. So, if you get caught out, you're going to be penned by everything in the Leopard. Which is why you need to play it sensibly and not be the first one in, which is why right here, I'm not rushing into the castle right now. I'm not trying to be the first one in. I'm letting the team be a distraction and I'm a support tank putting shots in where I can. Obviously, if you're a new player and you want the Leopard, I can't stop you. You are more than welcome to go ahead and purchase the Leopard. But I would say maybe, maybe hold off because you might not have as much fun in it as you could. Come back to it when you've got a bit more experience under your belt. And I make a mistake there by auto-locking the FV. He kills me, but the team is only five seconds away from the cap. And with two seconds to go, they're not getting off the cap, and we win by capping. So, that was a win. And to close things off with the A1, we have an epic victory. And we get MVP. So, there you have it. That is the Leopard 1 A1. And at the moment, you can get the Leopard 1 A1 in the store for 14,450 gold. And that package does come with a 3D skin, which does look pretty cool in my opinion. The 14,450 price tag is going to go down to what? I'm not sure exactly. I haven't found that information in the short time I've had. I'm sure someone could let us know in the comments, but the Leopard 1 A1 comes with a 10% XP boost, tank XP boost, 10% commander XP boost, 5% free XP boost, and lastly, a 65% silver boost. Not only is the A1 a beast of a tank, but it has one hell of a silver boost. 65% matches the few other premiums with the highest silver boost in Cold War. 65% in Cold War is the highest it can go and that's exactly what the Leopard's got. So this thing with some silver boosts is going to be making you an absolute fortune. So I highly recommend the Leopard 1 A1. It's a fantastic tank. Right, that's all I have to say on this one. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, if not a dislike. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always, I hope you're all still keeping safe and I'll see you out there.